He is the founder of podpage.com, the easiest way for podcasters to create instant, beautiful websites powered by their RSS feed. Prior to Podpage, he was also he has also worked at Google and previously started several other technology companies. So to further introduce him himself more, please welcome Brendan Mulligan. Hey everyone, how are you? Uh, thanks for having me. All right, Eric is going. Um, uh, nice to meet everyone. I, uh, Dave, that was awesome. Uh, and you remarkably shaved off a ton of time. I can probably, with Dave's uh, speed, I can probably also shave off time and get us back uh, exactly on track. So today, let me share my screen. Um, I am going to talk to you all about podcast websites. Um, it's a, there we go. Um, this is a, an area that I've worked in for a long time. Uh, I am, a, I've spent time building website platforms for, um, for musicians, for app developers, and also for podcasters. And so um, today I just want to go over the, uh, some of the basics of podcast websites and talk about options on um, how to build them. And then I give you a quick demo, if there's time, of a platform that I built. Um, there doesn't seem to be a way. It's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present this to get rid of all of the, the Google form wrap. But um, when I do that, I have no visuals of StreamYard. So um, if when I do that, you can't see anything, come, someone come on and audibly say that things aren't working. Otherwise, I'm just going to assume that they're working. Uh, so cool. Um, all right, so podcast websites. Uh, the agenda, I want to talk about why, why to have one. Um, I want to talk about options. I'll give you a demo. And um, we can do Q&A in that other session. And again, I'm going to try to go quickly to get us back on track. So why are podcast websites important? One second. Um, you should own the relationship with your listeners. I don't think that they leave every other slide out of this presentation and, and just kind of end right now um, if this point got across clearly. I think that we're in an, a time where there's, this, all, there's these awesome distribution channels with um, with iTunes, with Spotify, with Google Podcasts, with all the different podcast players. It's amazing that you can just create uh, an episode, upload it to your host, and it just shows up everywhere, and listeners have access to it. I think that's awesome. It's also awesome that listeners can subscribe to it and get alerts that new episodes are coming out from Apple Podcasts and stuff. Awesome. But the part that's bad is that if you only rely on those services, you don't have listeners. Apple has listeners. Apple just plays your content to their listeners. And so um, I think it's really important to try to build that community as much as you possibly can and, um, and not to let these platforms own your audience. So how do you do that? Um, we'll talk about that in a, in a few minutes, but the, your website gives you an opportunity to have that direct communication. Um, almost, almost all the time, unless your podcast has a very generic name, like the business podcast, um, if you have a website and you have a domain name that is related to that website, the podcast name, you can own the top spot on Google. I don't know if you don't have a website right now and you search your podcast name, you're probably going to see Apple and Google and Spotify and Spreaker and all those, those platforms show up. Um, what Google does is they think that those are really, uh, well trafficked sources. So they're going to put those at the top, but they don't necessarily think those places are the authority for your website. And so, when you build your own website, it's search engine optimized and it's at your domain. Google almost immediately, and when I say immediately, I mean um, weeks and months, not years, will say your website is the number one um, number one thing we should show. And that's crazy because there are companies that spend years trying to get to the top spot at Google. And with a good, well-optimized website, you can get there in a matter of weeks or months. Again, depending on how generic the name of your podcast is. Um, having a website gives you a sin single destination to point all your listeners to. So at the end of your podcast, you might be used to saying, oh, please go and rate me on iTunes and join my Patreon and um, do this over here and this over there. Like you got to remember that this isn't a blog post. Uh, you, listeners aren't sitting there with a pen or they can't click a link. Most likely they're in their car, they're on a walk and you want to give them the fewest things that they have impossible to actually remember. And so Instead, you could just say, if it's episode 10, you could say, hey, um, 
Thanks for listening. We'd love for you to rate the show and do all this other stuff. Just go to mydomain.com slash 10, right? And the listener has a very easy thing they can remember when they get to that link and see your episode page on your website. That's where you can say, don't forget to rate me. Don't forget to do all the other stuff. So um, single, single point. Uh, you should control how you introduce your show. And so this is, a, this is like if you build software, you spend a lot of time thinking about that in initial user experience. And think about it the first time you turned on whatever mobile phone you have. Most likely like Apple or Google said, welcome to Samsung, welcome to the phone. Like, what's your name? And then there was another screen. What, uh, let's get a picture of you or let's get your thumbprint. And there are these like little steps that they gave you. It didn't just open and there was a huge list of things that you had to fill out. Like they walked you through getting introduced to the new phone. You kind of have to do that with your podcast too. If you've got 30 to 300 episodes and you tell someone to go listen to you on Apple, they're going to see a huge list and they're going to see the most recent episode. Now that most recent episode might be your best episode, but most likely it was an episode you did a while ago. So with your own website, you can actually surface those great episodes at the top. So a new listener can start engaging with those before going deep into your catalog. Um, a website gives you a chance to introduce your personal brand. Like if you're a, um, if you're a true crime podcast and you might, the, the theme is dark and it, you know, typically those podcasts might like if they had a website, that website would be dark and black and um, a little bit more mysterious. If you have a podcast about candy, you probably have a very colorful white light website. And so when you send people to your website on iTunes, they might get that brand from the artwork. But if you send someone to an actual website, you can really introduce your brand to them. You can post extended info about each episode. So um, someone was telling me today that I think it was Megaphone uh, has a limit on the number of number you can, of characters you can put in the show notes. Other places don't let you put links. Other places don't show links. Like there's only so much you can do with your show notes being distributed to these players. But on your website, you can put photo galleries, videos. Um, you can put widgets. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. And so having a website allows you to really customize that episode page to really embody what that episode is about. Um, it also makes it a little easier for guests to show to share the episode because a guest, you know, a guest might say, "Hey, I was on this person's podcast. Um, go listen to it on iTunes, or if you have Google, go do that. And if you don't have either, do Spotify." But this way, you can just tell your guest, like, send everyone to this episode page. That's where all the content's going to be, and if, and that'll have jumping off points to the other platforms. Uh, it also gives listeners more ways to interact. And this kind of goes back to my first point, and I need to make a note to move this slide to the front because with your own website, you can give listeners, um, you know, you can give listeners to actually reach out to you. When you're listening to something on Apple Podcasts, there's no way for them to get in touch with you. Maybe they can leave you a review. But um, with your own website, they can send you an email. They can comment on an episode. Uh, they can make a donation through your website or become a member of your membership program. They can leave you a, a voicemail. You can use third-party tools or the, the service that we have um, has embedded voicemails. But that you can actually have your listeners go and at the end of your show, you can say, hey, go to my website, leave a voicemail, tell me what you thought of this episode, and we'll play the f a few voicemails at the beginning of the next episode. You can start building this loop where listeners are actually part of the show and part of your community. Um, they can write you review. And the reason I put this here is because you can send them to iTunes, but you can also have them write your review on your website um, where you can actually reply to it and, and start a conversation with them. So having a website just gives you a ton of ways for them to interact with you. Um, and the last point, websites are universally accessible. You don't know if someone has a podcast player on their phone. If you tweet the Apple link, but they're a Google um, user, that link won't work. Um, so why like chance it? Why not just put one link that will be able to access um, a URL for a website. Everyone's got a browser on their phone. So that's the, those are the seven reasons. Um, let me check my time. We've got 10 minutes. Uh, those are the seven reasons that I think you um, are best served having a website. Uh, about how to create a website, I see four, four major options. You've got WordPress, which I think it's the big, biggest platform on the web. It's amazing. It's got a huge community. It's got tons of templates, tons of plugins. Um, it's free. I put free in quotes because in order to use WordPress, you usually have to pay for other services like hosting, backups, SEO tools, all this other stuff. But um, but it's free and it's amazing. And if you have the time and effort, if you can take the effort to learn WordPress, you really can get really far and you can customize it to be perfect. So I love WordPress. I think it's amazing. The issue with WordPress is there is usually a lot to learn. 
and people, especially podcasters who really don't want to deal with their website, they would rather just podcast, um, tend to complain to me that like the plugins were hard to use and they always need to be updated. And they kept have being nickel and dimed, not by WordPress, but by the community of like, oh, we want to increase the SEO of our website. Well, we have to pay 50 bucks a year to some other plugin to be able to do that for us. It just gets a little confusing and expensive. So typically people move away from WordPress because it's confusing. But if you have someone who can help you, it's a great option. Um, your podcast host probably gives you a basic website. And this is great. Uh, some of them are better than others, but um, but it's set up for, for, it's already set up. It doesn't usually cost anything more than what you're already paying your host. Um, the issue with these, and it's a great start. And if you can attach a domain to it, it really is a great place to start. Um, where people hit barriers is there are a lot of features. Um, usually, you know, the hosting business is thinking about the host, hosting part of their, their site. And so the website usually is an afterthought. And so even if it looks nice, it probably won't be updated more than once a year. Um, a lot of usually features don't come to it. It's uh, kind of depends on your host for this. Um, not great SEO and very most of the time, there's just not a lot of customization. So, but before you pay for any other service, check out your podcast host because there are some that have great websites. There's Squarespace or Wix or Weebly, some of those services, they're amazing. Um, I know people have amazing podcast websites. They're really great if your main business is like coaching or something different than your podcast and you just want to put a page on there for your podcast. It's great because they're, the editing experience is great. They've got tons of templates. The biggest negative, um, and I'll talk about this in a second, is they're not podcast focused. And so, um, you know, you might have to, every time you release an episode, you might have to log in and create a new page for your new episode, stuff like that. They won't import your reviews from Apple. They won't have a voicemail feed for your customers. Um, they won't import your episodes and let you do, you know, little interesting things with it. So, but it's a great Squarespace Wix, totally try them out. Um, and then there's PodPage. There's a few other services that are similar that are built for podcasters. Um, really easy to set up, uh, not a lot to learn, uh, tons of features based for podcasters. And the barriers you hit with these kind of services like PodPage is you're not going to be able to do the customization that you can do with WordPress. It's just never going to happen because WordPress is open source and you can get into the code. Things like PodPage are really more like Squarespace, but for podcasters. Um, and I usually say these services usually fall between like the simplicity of a podcast host and the ultimate customization of WordPress. So um, let's take the last seven minutes because I actually think we can get through um, and actually we'll just build a a website and I'll show you a website. Uh, usually when there's a two way interaction, I'll just have someone throw out their, their podcast name, but um, I'll use Dak Shepard. Uh, so I'll do a quick demo at podpage.com. Uh, if you're interested in this, I forgot to give a code ahead of time. Just if you go to the page down on the right hand side, there's a little button. Um, if you're interested, uh, go to podpage.com at any point, hit that, you'll see me or someone who works on the site. Just say you found out about us at PyFiesta and we'll give you a discount for the pro page. Um, so let's go ahead and move over to, to PodPage. Um, this is just podpage.com, we'll click get started. Uh, first thing you need to do is just enter your podcast name. This is when I just really hope that I don't hit any bugs. But we use Armchair Expert by Doc Shepard, which is one of my favorites. Your email address. This is just so we can send you a link. Um, found out about this at a conference. Hit generate a page. So right now what's happening is we are going to your podcast feed and we're pulling in all your episodes and your metadata and um, just tons of info. And so that was probably like eight to 10 seconds. And every one of these websites that you see is not a screenshot. This is a fully functional website that has tons of episode pages. Um, it looks great when you put it, when you go to mobile. Um, and you're kind of done. It'll it'll stay up to date for as long as you do your podcast. We'll just keep pulling in episodes. We'll keep pulling in reviews from the App Store, um, and that. So we'll go in and customize it. But just to be clear, like it's the website is complete at this point. Essentially, uh, we will choose this template, and then you need to sign in. This just gets you. Uh, this will get you. So you can start making customizations and you can save the customizations. And so this just gives you an overview of what just happened. We've imported the podcast info. Um, we pulled in 342 pages. We've created individual episode pages for every single one of those. And we've already search engine optimized them. 
Uh, we pulled in 500 reviews from the Apple App Store. Now it's only 500 because that's the, the maximum amount they give, but those are all going to be on your website and searchable and shareable. Um, the whole thing's been optimized for search. The whole thing's been optimized for mobile. And we started creating additional pages for you. So now we can go in and start customizing. So we're now three minutes into this. Um, first, you just confirm some basic info. This is all right. Um, if you want to up upload different episode artwork, you can. Now, most podcasts have some sort of a primary color that they use for the brand. Um, for this, it's like this orange, yellowy orange. So we'll just kind of find something that's close to that. By changing the color, it'll change all the buttons, the links, um, and suddenly the whole page kind of takes on that, that new brand. Um, you can also change the background color if you want. I think we'll leave it at white just because that fits this brand. But if you wanted to make it horrible, you could. And we'll move on. Now fonts, um, basically we support the whole Google fonts um, catalog and they have some crazy fonts in there. I won't go into it, but if you wanted um, something that was more, uh, that was different than what's already here, you basically just change your header text font and it'll change across the entire site. You can get more granular, but the idea is like just with a few settings, you can make your page look drastically different. Move on from fonts. Um, if you're, you know, you can always add your social links. I'll add mine. Um, what this does is this will add uh, your social presence to your navigation bar, and it'll also add a social widget that I'll show you in a minute, but you can add all the places that you're on the internet. Um, if you wanna add a revenue page, you can say like, yeah, I'm, um, you can donate to me. I've got, I've got a PayPal link, so let's say. You, know, you put your PayPal link in here, and what that does is that actually create the whole page on the website that is all about your donations, and you can, you can sort of build that out. And then we start highlighting the episode page. So there's a lot more you can do here, but essentially every one of the episodes has a full page. It's fully search engine optimized. It, it, it'll send people to other, other sites. Um, we can go into that in a little bit. And that's it. You built a website. So I'll, I'll open it. Um, this is the website. So he's a looks like he's a Simplecast uh, user. So we pull in the Simplecast, um, me, the media player. Um, there's this area at the top where you can feature like episodes that are popular. Um, and then here's your list of all the episodes you've done. Here's where you can find out, like listen to the podcast on all these different platforms. Here's your PayPal link. If we go into one of these pages, um, it'll show the, the episode player from this particular episode is preloaded. It'll help you find other featured episodes and move around the site. You can start collecting emails. Dave just talked about how important it is to collect emails that comes in out of the box. You can be collecting emails on your website. Um, we also built this review page. And so, uh, if you want to be like, you know, this is a great way. I agree with Dave. It doesn't necessarily move you up the charts, but the social proof is great. And if you have the social proof, it's great to put it on your website. So people can go in and then th we build these individual shareable pages. So people can share this on Twitter. It looks amazing. Um, you have a full contact form. And so there's a ton more you can do with the site. And I know I'm out of time, but in the last two minutes, I will, um, give you a quick overview of the dashboard. Um, in the dashboard, you can create a storefront so you can list a bunch of different, um, you can list a, you know, if you sell a book on Amazon and you have t-shirts on Teespring, all, all that stuff can show up on your storefront. Um, we have a, we're building a whole guest management system where you can actually, um, build guest profiles and detach them to your episodes, but also give a way for guests to come in. Like if you have a guest coming on your show and you want them to fill out a form, you can just send them a link to your website. They'll fill out the form. Not only will you get that info, but they'll, it'll build the profile that you can link to the episode. Um, you can manage an entire blog if you want. So you, it's just a normal blogging platform. If you want to put blog posts up in addition to your episode pages, you can do that. And then there's a bunch of, um, customizations you can do to your, your actual website. So if you want to go in and, and tinker how things look, let's say we picked a homepage header that had, um, that looks like this, but you can go in and if you want, you can change the layout to be something totally different. You can put a big, big banner image up there. You can lose your media player and make your, um, your header just like a little bit more standard. So there's tons of stuff you can do, um, tons of small customizations. Again, you're going to get further with, with something like, um, WordPress because it is just more customizable, but here, you know, you can continue to go and update your website. If you want to totally change the entire design, you can go in and do that with a click of one button and the whole thing changes to your new design. 
So that is me at time. Um, again, just go to podpage.com, click the button in the bottom right if you have any questions ongoing. I think I'm doing a Q&A session after this. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And I think someone's gonna come on and move us to the next. Thank you so much, Brendan, for that talk. Thank you so much. Actually, you still have time if you want to, but um, we'll move on if you if you want. For the participant, I'd just like to remind everyone that you can move on to the session button and the hop-in platform, wherein you can ask Brendan some questions, some personal questions. No, I'm kidding. Our questions about the pod page. Thank you so much again, Brendan. Thank you all. Really all right. It.